So there are two ways that I can generate a phase difference between two waves. One is have them emitted from sources that are not in phase with each other. The second is the waves can be emitted in phase but travel a different distance and, and one of them traveling an additional distance relative to the, to the other will, will make them out of phase at some particular point. So as an example, let's say I have two sources, source A and source B. And they're separated by three meters, and both of them emit waves that have a wavelength of one meter, and the waves from both sources are initially in phase. If I want to think about what's going on at point P, well, what I notice is source B is four meters away from point P. But because this basically makes a three, four, five right triangle, that tells me that the waves traveling from source A don't just travel four meters, they, tra they have to travel this additional distance. And so the first thing I want to do is figure out what that path difference is. So delta lambda, these two Greek letters, uh, the, is the symbol that we're going to use to denote the path difference. How much farther does one wave travel than the other? In this case, since the total distance from source A to point P is 5 meters, and the distance the wave travels from source B is 4 meters, the path difference is just, well, 5 meters minus 4 meters, it's 1 meter. So I know that the wave coming from source A has to travel 1 meter more than the wave coming from source B. To now relate that path difference, that additional 1 meter distance that the wave from source A has to travel, to a phase difference, I need to use this equation. So this equation is the core equation in terms of how I relate phase difference and path difference. So what this equation tells me is that your phase difference divided by 2 pi, so you can think of this as this is 2 pi is all the way around the circle, the phase difference is some fraction of that, is equal to the path difference, how much farther did one way travel than the other, divided by its wavelength. Both of these, the phase difference and the path difference, what we care about is what those are relative to how far you go to reset your wave. So in thinking about phase, you go all the way around 2 pi to reset your wave. In distance, you travel a wavelength. To reset your wave. So if I take this equation, what it lets me do is it says, oh, the ratio of the phase difference to 2 pi is equal to the path difference, which in this case we said was 1, divided by the wavelength, which we were told was also 1 meter. And so that means that that ratio ends up being 1. So if I want to solve this for the phase difference then, well, just multiply the 2 pi over, and so I get that the phase difference between these two waves when they get to point P is 2 pi. And I know 2 pi is a point of constructive interference. So when you think about how your waves are going to add up when they get to some particular point, again, this ratio, whether it's the ratio of the phase difference to 2 pi or the ratio of the path difference to the wavelength, when that comes out to be a whole number, 0, 1, 2, 3, what that means is you've got phase differences of 0, 2 pi, 4 pi, 6 pi, 8 pi, etc. Or you've got path differences that are 0, 1 wavelength, 2 wavelength, 3 wavelengths, 4 wavelengths, some integer value of wavelengths. And so your waves are in, are constructively interfering, they perfectly line up, and they give you twice what you started with, assuming that you are talking about identical waves. So if I've got wave 1 and wave 2, notice in this graph I can't even see wave 1 because it's underneath wave 2, and the resultant wave, the purple wave, when I add together the red wave and the blue wave, is twice as big as each of those waves individually. I have constructive interference for these values of this ratio. 
On the other hand, if this ratio is one half or one and a half or two and a half or some integer value plus another half, then what that means is the phase shift is off by half of the way around the circle. The path difference is off by half a wavelength and in that case my waves are going to interfere destructively and cancel each other out. So this happens when I have phase difference values of pi, 3 pi, 5 pi, 7 pi, 9 pi. One of those waves has gone halfway around the circle relative to the other and so when I add them up they cancel. Or it means that one of those waves has traveled half a wavelength more so wherever one of my waves is at a peak, the other one's at a trough. And so again, when you add those up, they cancel each other out. You get zero amplitude when your ratio is some half integer. So constructive interference, when they perfectly line up, destructive interference, when they perfectly cancel out, everything else we can label as intermediate interference. And so, again, you can calculate out, right, depending on what numbers you choose, you can figure out values for delta phi, so your phase shift. You can figure out values for delta lambda, your path difference. And again, given what those are, what you'll notice is the closer those values are to constructive interference numbers, the larger your amplitude is. So we said phase difference was zero, your path difference was zero, you had constructive interference, and you got twice your amplitude. But as you start to shift one of those waves relative to the other, this gets larger and larger and larger until you get to the point where they're canceling each other out. And again, what you see is your amplitude gets smaller and smaller and smaller. Somewhere in here is a phase difference of pi and a path difference of half a wavelength. That's where they completely cancel out. As you now continue to shift them, they get closer and closer and closer to where you have a phase difference of 2 pi and a path difference of one wavelength. And so again, your amplitudes start coming back up as your waves more and more line up. And again, when you get back to that point of constructive interference, they'll be back to twice the individual amplitude of your waves. So what these phase difference or path difference are will end up telling you what your resultant amplitude is. And the closer you are to a point of constructive interference, the larger the amplitude is going to be. The closer you are to a point of destructive interference, the smaller your amplitude is going to be. The more your waves are going to cancel each other out.